the 240 finally made it home! It is here in my garage, ready to do some work. So, let's dig into it. I bought this car for $4,500. I knew the engine was bad. I don't know how bad. And that's what I'm fixing to figure out, at least get an idea of in this video. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the hood off. We're going to spin the engine over by hand. We're gonna see if we can hear anything. I heard that it had, or from what I was told, it it'll spin over and it'll even run, but there's a horrendous knock. And I was also told it had a loss of compression on at least one cylinder. So that's what I'm trying to figure out here is, do we have loss of compression on one cylinder or multiple cylinders? And what is causing the knocking noise? Let's get to it. Hood's off, now we can see a little bit better. And now we're gonna try turning it over by hand to see, and see what it's like. I can hear, I can hear compression. So that's a good sign. Uh, what? Uh, what? <laughs> I thought this engine turned over and started and ran, because... <laughs> that's, that's not moving. That's not, that's not what I want. Uh, this is bad. This is like really bad. Okay, well, what? Okay, let's, I'm gonna pull a valve cover. Maybe we got like a valve that's caught or something. This is already unbolted because they were looking at it. That should have been a pretty important sign to me that they were already had the valve cover off to look at stuff. But I definitely ignored that. Most definitely ignored it. Okay. All the valves look like they're up. These ones are down because the lobe is pushing it down. Also these ones, the jump time. I mean, it's a timing chain. Timing chains don't typically jump timing unless the tensioner is bad, but it's, it's got good tension on it. That's not likely to, to be what's going on. Uh, this isn't good. Uh, this engine already, the first thing I'm doing, I'm already finding it's, it's worse than I thought it was. So we could have piston to valve contact uh, from jump timing, possible. We could have some sort of piston that's binding in the bore for whatever reason. We could have, I guess we could have a bent rod and the bent rod is causing the, like the piston skirt to touch on something, bind on something. I've heard of like the piston skirt binding on like the, or hitting on the crankshaft counterbalance or counterweight. Well, let me get my borescope out and I'll scope all four of the cylinders to see if there's anything inside. So this is my first time using this borescope. So I'm actually really excited about it. It's just one of the ones that plugs into your phone. It just sucks that this is why. So I guess I'll pull the, pull the spark plugs out, see what I find. When I find anything, get this car up in the air, get it up on some jack stands, drop the oil pan and see what's under the oil pan. 
See if I can find anything that's binding under there. So I guess that'd be a good way to start anyway to see how gross the oil is. So I guess before I get into scoping it, I'll show you what it looks like under the valve cover here. It's, it's honestly really clean. Um, there's obviously a, like a little bit of buildup like here that I can just, it wipes right off uh, just from old oil. But it really looks in good shape other than obviously the engine not spinning over completely and locking up somewhere. So I guess now we'll pull plugs and uh, get to scoping it out. Well, there's some water in there. Yeah, that's... That's water. I didn't even stop to check the... The oil. Maybe I should have done that. I'll have to check the dipstick here in a minute. This one dripping with water. What the heck is going on here? And that one's dry. Pulled the dipstick. I see some gross stuff. Some really gross stuff there. Ooh. I've got my borescope plugged into my phone. That's gonna be looking at it on. And then this big snake looking thing here. This is the borescope. So we're gonna scope each cylinder and see what we find, if anything. So first up is cylinder number one. I wish video would work on this. So the, the bore scope is supposed to be able to record video. And come on, get in there. Huh? Well, cylinder one doesn't look too bad, to be honest. I'm gonna take a picture of that. Like it's hard to see everything. So cylinder one is the only one that didn't have any, whoop, didn't have any uh, water in it, but it, it looks really good in cylinder one. So now, okay, cylinder two and three are, are up at the top, so I can't go into those, but I'm going all the way to the back to cylinder four. I see water in there, but I don't necessarily see any issues with piston to valve contact. Okay, now we're gonna spin the engine back the other way. Oh, that's not even moving. What? Do I have a broken rod? Bro, that piston isn't moving at all. Okay, well, let me take a look at cylinder three because cylinder two isn't moving. <laughs> okay, I know what the problem is. I either have a broke piston or broke rod and uh, on cylinder two, and it's stuck at the top, ish. Okay then. Well, I still wanna get it up in the air. I wanna take a look to see what actually is broken under there. So I guess that's what we do now. I'm not particularly excited about this next bit. I gotta drain the oil. I've got a little cup here so I can catch some of it so I can see what it looks like. Uh, I have a feeling this is gonna be really, really bad. <clears throat> It's gonna come out over here, isn't it? That's gonna, I bet you this is gonna get all over my floor. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh my gosh, that's just water. What is this? Why is the oil blue? Do you see this? Dude. What the heck? This is not oil at all. Oh, there's the oil. Who did the previous owner of this car piss off? Because that was not oil coming out of there. Looked like Kool-Aid. Oh yeah! Or washer fluid. And there's some chunks on the bottom of this, some metal debris. So I'm gonna go wipe that off while that drains. Ugh. Oh, gross, 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 gross. Ugh. I spilled some stuff. That. that does not look good at all. Yeah, that, that's in the pan, all those chunks there. Because it's a small pan, I can't really see what's going on up in there. Um, 
I gotta drop the whole upper bit, which is, you know, this big aluminum thing. Blech. And to do that, I'm gonna have to, uh, I have to pull the engine out. But here is the windage tray, right? And this is sitting on top of it. I think it's safe to say that something catastrophic came apart in there from lack of lubrication, which usually means rod bearings, which usually means rods. I guess, I guess we'll see next time. So unfortunately that isn't like <laughs> a conclusive, this is everything is damaged, but I think that's all I got time for in this video. Um, I'm kind of kind of bummed a little bit. This, this engine's damaged worse than I thought. I, I, go, I knew going into it, it was gonna be damaged, but I didn't think it was gonna be this bad. So now I know I need at least rods and pistons at this point, because if the rod came apart, the piston came apart. I mean, so I'm gonna need both of those and a full bottom end rebuild kit. I might need a block. I might need a head. I might need new everything. And the only way for me to tell is we'll rip the engine out and pull the head off and all that stuff. So yeah. <laughs>